Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Josh Carney, but most of you probably know me from YouTube as Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to my brand new Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this course, I'll walk you through everything you need to know to get started using Logic Pro 11, including basic operations, understanding the user interface, the grid and transport controls, how to work with tracks and regions, how to use Apple Loops to build basic musical arrangements, We'll also get into MIDI and making music with software instruments or virtual instruments as they're sometimes called. I'll demonstrate how to record audio with a microphone, record electric guitar and bass, how to use the session players and chord track that are new to Logic 11. And I'll explain how to use all of Logic's editing tools and we'll even get into some basic mixing and then wrap up the course with bouncing and exporting your musical projects. So this course will supply you with all of the foundational knowledge you need to get started in Logic Pro 11. In this video, I'll start off by showing you how to install Logic, how to turn on the advanced functionality, which used to be called the advanced tools. And I'll also show you how to manage the massive sound library that's included with Logic. And I'll show you how to relocate your sound library to an external hard drive so you don't waste space on your Mac. But before I get into the video, I need to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox is the ultimate file storage and collaboration tool for musicians, artists, producers, and mix engineers. You can upload your mixes, stems, multi-tracks, and even full DAW sessions to store or share with your collaborators, who can then leave timestamped feedback on your projects. In addition to file storage and sharing, Boombox is a full suite of collaborative, creative, and promotional tools. You can create public or private playlists, create your own custom artist page to reach new fans and clients, tap into the power of Boombot AI, which is an AI-powered co-writer that can generate chord progressions and other MIDI musical ideas. It can assist you with your lyrics, and it can even split stems and remove vocals. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their pro or premium plans if you need more. Okay, so let's get started with a fresh installation of Logic Pro 11. A couple of things to keep in mind here. You're gonna wanna go up to your Apple about this Mac and see what version of Mac OS you're running. Here I'm running 13.6.1, which is Ventura, and Logic Pro 11 requires 13.5 or higher in order to run Logic 11 on your machine. Otherwise, a different version of Logic may show up here in the App Store. So this is the first place we want to go to to install Logic is the App Store. Now, I have the App Store down here on my dock, but if you're brand new to using Mac OS, you can come over here to the Launchpad and you'll typically find the App Store here in the launch pad, or you can press Command Spacebar and use Spotlight to search for the App Store, and you'll see there it is, and we can open it up. So once you're in the App Store, just search up Logic Pro, and then you're gonna have to buy Logic Pro if you haven't done so already. The good news about Logic 11 is that it's still a free upgrade, so if you bought Logic Pro 10, like I did way back in the day, I bought it in like 2013, that Logic Pro 10 license is still eligible for a free upgrade to Logic Pro 11. Just make sure you're signed in with your Apple ID. So what we're gonna do here is just download Logic Pro. And what this is gonna do is it's just going to download like the base application and it's gonna ask you to add some other things to it. The initial minimum sound library as well as the full sound library. So we'll cut to that in just a bit. Okay, so the download is just wrapped up and we can open up Logic Pro uh, right from here from the App Store, but I wanna show you another thing I'd highly recommend doing, and that is putting Logic Pro on your dock for easy access. So to do this, just click anywhere on the background of your desktop, go up to Go, and then go to Applications, or you can press Shift-Command-A. And then in the Applications folder, we're gonna look for the Logic Pro app. And so here it is. And all you have to do is click and drag this down onto your dock. So I'm gonna put it right here next to Pro Tools. So now, if I wanna open this up from the dock, I just have to click here to open it up. Now, the first time you open up Logic Pro, it's going to take a little bit longer than usual um, because it has to you know, load its settings and everything. So one of the first things they ask you is, do you wanna use the simplified mode of Logic 
or the complete mode. I'm going to choose the simplified mode for now because I'm going to show you how to choose the complete mode after you've already chosen simplified mode. For this course, you're going to want to work in complete mode because simplified mode is kind of like garage band advanced. It's, you know, it, it's missing a lot of the features, the more advanced tools and features that are in the complete mode. And we want all of those complete mode tools. For now, I'm going to select simplified. It's going to ask you to download some essential sounds. So this is just a basic package of instruments and loops. So you could click download later, but I'm just going to click close. And what this will do is it'll continue to download that essential sound library in the background and Logic Pro will start to boot up here. So you're going to get a screen that says what's new in Logic Pro, Session Players, Chroma Glow, Stem Splitter. It's worth mentioning that Chroma Glow and Stem Splitter will not work in Logic Pro 11 if you don't have Apple Silicon. It's going to ask you to download some Session Players content. And that download just finished. That's why this dialog is popping up. So I'll just type in my password to install that software. And I'll also download these three Session Player packages. Okay, so all of that's just kind of downloading in the background. The first dialogue you're going to see when you open up Logic 11, other than all of those downloads that we just did, is the choose a project dialogue or the project chooser. If you don't see this, you can go up to file and then new, and this will bring up that choose a project dialogue. Now there's different things you can do in here. You can create a new project for recording with tracks or a live loops project. You can choose recent projects, there are some example live loops grids that are kind of fun to play around with. There are tutorials in here. There are demo projects as well as project templates. So I'm just going to go back to new project and we're going to create a new empty project here. You can also click the details here. And if you already know what tempo you're going to be working in, what key you're working in for your project, you can select all of that here as well. So if I want to go like 90 BPM and a minor, you can also choose your audio interface here at this point, although I'll show you how to do that later. And there's some other options down here as well that we can ignore for now. And Logic will force you to create a track. You can't enter the tracks area or the main window here without creating at least one track. So there's four different types of tracks. We're gonna come back to these later, but for now I'm just gonna create a MIDI software instrument track just as a placeholder. Now there's two real telltale signs, whether you're in simplified mode or complete mode. In simplified mode, your tracks are gonna look like this. They're gonna have these like icons, the headphones, the icons are gonna look different on the tracks. And also in the upper right corner, you'll see this option that says simplified mode. You can actually click on this and you can enable the complete features of Logic Pro. Uh, and another way to find this is you can go up to Logic Pro settings and then go to advanced and see how small this list is. When I go to advanced and I enable the complete features, the icons on the track are going to change. The simplified mode up here in the upper right is no longer going to be shown. And then if I go back into Logic Pro settings, you'll see I have more options here. So this complete mode is what used to be called the advanced tools. Do you want to turn on or turn off the advanced tools. I highly recommend you turn on your advanced tools. Okay, so in the library over here, which you can click here to show or press Y to hide and show, you'll see that we're still downloading a lot of the sound library content. And if we click over here on this button, this is the Apple Loops library or browser. And you'll see that it's still indexing the loops. You'll see a lot of these are grayed out. These are ones that haven't been downloaded yet. And the way you can check on that download is right here, this blue bar. If you click on that, that will show you how much of the essential sound library you've installed so far. Okay, so I'm going to give this a bit. I'm going to let it finish downloading. And then I'm going to show you how to install the full sound library. Okay, so the installation is complete. And as you can see in the library, we still have these little download icons next to some of these folders. And in the Apple Loops browser over here, we have several loops that have not been downloaded. Now, that initial installation, the essential sound library content, is only a tiny portion of the full Logic sound library. On the Apple website, I believe they say it's 72 gigabytes but I honestly think it's closer to like 90 gigabytes in total. And these comprise mostly of loops, 
sample-based instruments and impulse responses for Space Designer, uh, one of Logic's reverb plugins. That's the vast majority. Uh, really, the vast majority is sample-based instruments. So how do you install and manage all of this extra content? Well, you're going to go up to Logic Pro. You're going to go to Sound Library. And we've already downloaded all of the essential sounds. So that's why that's grayed out. And then you can also select download all available sounds. Uh, what I like to do is go into the sound library manager. And in here, you can actually see a list of all of the sound packs that you have and haven't installed. So what I like to do is just select all of these except for the ones that I've already installed and then click install. And you'll see it's 89.12 gigabytes. I think the total download is 64, but the installation requires 89 uh, for whatever reason. So this is gonna take a while. I'm gonna go ahead and do this off screen and I'll be right back. And I'll also show you when I get back how to relocate your sound library. Okay, I'm back. Everything has downloaded properly. You can see in both the library and the loop browser that all of the content has been downloaded. There's no more download buttons. If for some reason you've downloaded and installed the entire sound library, but you're still seeing some of the loops showing as not being downloaded, try going up to sound packs. And at the bottom of this list, there's an option to re-index all loops. Sometimes the loops just need to be re-indexed in order for Logic to know uh, where they are and what their location is. Now, let's say that you don't have like a ton of hard drive space on your computer itself, and you want to move the entire Logic sound library over to an external drive. In order to do that, you go up to Logic Pro sound library, and then under relocate sound library, you'll see a few options here. So Macintosh HD, that's my internal hard drive. You can see that's my current sound library files location. And you can see I have two different external drives hooked up at this moment. Now, all you have to do is select the external drive you wanna save the library to, and then click relocate. It'll take a little while to move everything over, but eventually it will move everything from your main drive over to your external drive so you can save that internal space. Now, if you have the space for it, I say just go for it and stick it right on your main hard drive. Honestly, I find that some of the sound library loads a little slower when I put it on a moving hard drive, like an actual magnetic hard drive, not a solid state drive. With a solid state drive over USB-C or Thunderbolt, it should load up immediately, just like it was on the system drive. So for me, I'm just gonna keep this on my main hard drive, but if for some reason you've moved it over and you just don't like how it's working, you can always click on Macintosh HD again and relocate it back to your internal hard drive. So that's always an option. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.